All right, folks, we're coming to you live from the Southern Hill Transport Home Office at the counter. All right, all right so uh, everybody that uh, gets into trucking, you know, you got that first uh, new entry or new entrant safety audit. Uh, so I got my email uh, last week. <clears throat> so I'm gonna kind of read over what the email says briefly, and then I'm gonna let you know what you have to have to send to the FMCSA, all right? So uh, it just says the uh, Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration is responsible for ensuring the safe operation of commercial motor vehicles on our nation's highways because your company has recently begun operation in interstate commerce. The FMCSA is required to conduct a new entry safety audit on, of your company's operations. All right? The safety audit will include a review of your company's safety management controls in the following areas as applicable. Driver's hours of service, licensing, vehicle maintenance and inspection, driver qualifications, including drug and alcohol testing requirements, accidents, insurance, operating authority, and other safety and transportation records, including any requirements for transporting hazardous materials. Please submit legible copies of applicable documents or a written explanation for your failure to submit the documents via the safety audit website within 20 calendar days from the date of official letter sent to your address. You will need your PIN number and your USDOT number to log into your site. Additional documentation may be required. Descriptions of requested documents are attached. <clears throat> Submissions of all documents required for your operation may negate the need to conduct an on-site new entry safety audit at your place of business and may therefore reduce the amount of time to complete the required audit process. Uh, and if you don't do it, they'll shut you down. Okay? So, anyway, uh, they send you two attachments. One is a fax letterhead, okay? And it actually has your new entry safety audit number, okay? So whenever you actually log on, and uh, we'll get to that. You will actually want to log on with your DOT number uh, and PIN number because whenever it's time to update your logs, you want to go to your ELD and make sure you send them that way. If not, you're going to print off about 100 pages and then your fax machine's not going to be happy. And they probably won't be happy either when they get all that paper coming out of their fax machine. <laughs> all right, so then they give you a list of everything you got to have three pages worth okay and i'm gonna read those off so you can be prepared before you get yours all right so bear with me <coughs> there's no pictures on here and i don't know how to read no i'm just kidding all right so first one is a driver's list since i'm the only driver it's pretty easy okay on that driver's list, you have to have a last name, first name, date of birth, date of hire, driver's license number, and the state, okay? The next thing is the vehicle list, all right? Upload a list of vehicles, tractors, trailers owned by the carrier, along with associated unit numbers, VINs, and plate numbers, okay? Vehicle equipment list. If anybody knows how to use Word or Excel, it's easy to make, all right? So, I have a Class 8 type of vehicle, Class 8, year make and model, 2003 Peterbilt 379, VIN number, yada, 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 uh, license plate number and vehicle number, and does it require an ELD? Yes. Trailer is also down there below that. Does it require an ELD? No. Okay. Proof of insurance. All right. <clears throat> On your proof of insurance, all carriers must have insurance sufficient to satisfy the minimum public liability uh, requirements. If your carrier operation is for hire, paid to transport, all right, the minimum public liability uh, upload a, a copy of your MCS 90. Now, in your insurance, 
you should have one of these, okay? It doesn't say MCS 90, but basically it's a motor carrier policies of insurance for public liability under section 29 and 30 of the uh, Motor Carrier Act of 1980, okay? And this is the endorsement, all right? Front page is basically signed by the insurance company. And the second page gives you all of your uh, coverage, all right? Uh, sounds like the Hells Angels just pulled up. All right, so then you're going to step on down to driver's medical certificate. Got to have one. If you got a CDL, you know what that is. Basically, you're going to have in your physical, make sure you're not colorblind and your blood pressure is not too high and, you know, all that good stuff. All right? Got it. All right there. All right? And I got this done on 621 of 19. I already had one before that when I actually started the business. But my blood pressure was so damn high, they only let me have it for 90 days. I had to go back. All right? So uh, I get to do it every year. But anyway, there's that. <clears throat> All right. Turn the page. That's a good song. Um, driver's Motor Vehicle Record. All right. North Carolina Division of Motor Vehicles, driving record check. Mine's two pages, okay? <laughs> All the way back to when I was a kid, all right? So, send that up. A uh, copy of your driver's license. I look just as bad on paper as I do on camera. You should see me in person. All right. Driver's record of records of duty status. That's where you want to go to the site. You want to go to your ELD homepage, okay, on the computer, if you're an administrator, and you can download the last 30 days, all right? And when you download it, send email or whatever, what's it say here? It says to submit electronic logging device via web service. It'll say that on their web service. <clears throat> ELD, ELD device will prompt user to enter a comment, and it does. Uh, the comment you must enter uh, must be news, E-E-N-E-W-S, and then the number that is on the front of your fax cover sheet because that's the same number you'll get when you log in to your FMCSI, FMCSA website, okay? So you just put that down in the notes and hit send. All right, so they got that, but they don't have this yet. I haven't faxed it, all right? All right, vehicle inspections. They just want it on the tractor, not the trailer. Got it, okay? And you can do these yourself. You can pick them up in any parts house, uh, truck stop, whatever. You can fill them out, but they have to be signed by a certified inspector, okay? All right, so we got that. <clears throat> now we're going on to the drug and alcohol testing, okay? Now, I had to have... Um, a drug test to start with the company, North Carolina rules, okay? And I did. That is what this is. These are the test results. I think it cost me about 125 bucks, 100, 140 bucks, but that was the physical drug test and everything, okay? So that's that. Uh, so, upload a proof of pre-employment. You can upload all this stuff on the FMCSA website if you've got it all downloaded to your computer or you can fax it. Okay. All right. So, got that. Upload proof of random testing program. Now, if you're under 26,000 pounds, you do not have to be in a random, random testing program, okay? It's only over 26,001 pounds that you have to be. So, when I got old orange fella out there, I had to enroll in something, all right? A drug contour. 
Uh, so <clears throat> I enrolled with Foley. Um, so there's the proof. It says right here, Certificate of Drug and Alcohol Pro Program Enrollment for Southern Hell Transport. This employer listed above has enrolled in a drug and alcohol testing program with Foley Carrier Services that meets the following requirements, DOG regulations, and described in 49 CFR Parts 40 and 382. Now, why they put it in Part 40 and then waited to put some more in 382, I have no idea. But anyway, all right, so there's that. There's my proof, okay? Now, <clears throat> uh, the other proof I have is, is where I paid to enroll. That's my receipt. Uh, I just like to go over and above, give people a little bit more than they ask for. Normally, they'll quiet down. All right. Okay, so once you get through that, <clears throat> um, I went ahead and I've already had a random since I've started, so this is my random with Foley Services. All right. And then, of course, um, they will ask for a list of drivers uh, in that program. There's my list of drivers that's in that program. It's me. It's only me. All right. So and then the last thing they'll ask you is an accident register. All carriers that have been in a crash in the past three years need to submit to the following. Not drivers, carriers. Now I've been in a commercial vehicle accident in the last three years, but as a carrier, I have not, okay? So all carriers involved in an FMCSA reportable crash in the last three years must retain an accident register. A reportable crash is one in which the vehicle was towed from the scene or an injury or fatality occurred, okay? Uh, if you or one of your drivers has been involved in a crash in the past three years, upload an accident register for this carrier. All right, so there you go. And then the last thing is, is if uh, your um, hazardous materials, which is not me. So, um, <clears throat> but that's the end of it. It's pretty simple. It's pretty straightforward. You've got 20 days to submit all your documents. And if you've been doing, keeping up with everything as you started uh, doing your Google homework, following the FMCSA, you'll have about 95% of this stuff, okay? Uh, but that is the gist of the new entry safety audit. They don't actually come to your house unless you give them reason to. Plus, I've had two DOT inspections, uh, a level one uh, and a level three, and they were both good. So, um, and they can see that up there, okay? But anyway, um, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, like, subscribe, um, donations to, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, Y'all have a big old weekend, what's left of it. And uh, we'll see you next week. Later.